Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as you know, uh, Governor-elect Dayton and uh, Governor-elect, uh, Lieutenant Governor-elect uh, Yvonne Pert <laughs> at our meeting this afternoon in uh, my office. Uh, it was great just to sit down, get to know each other a little bit. Uh, it was very nice of them to make their way over to our Senate offices to do that. Uh, I think we had a, a really helpful meeting. It was a sort of 30,000 feet talking about some of the bigger issues and a lot of the issues that we've been uh, talking about, we talked about on the campaign trail, and been talking about the last month. Um, but we very much appreciate it, and we are looking forward to working with the Dayton administration. Well, I, they they gave me this wonderful <laughs> gift here. Uh, somebody had done some some uh, effective uh, r intelligence gathering about my my uh, culinary preferences here. So, uh, GOP uh, research. So maybe as, on, maybe you know. <laughs> But I actually think what I'll do is we're talking with Senator Coker the way over. I was at the farmer's market in Buffalo, you see, <laughs> it's, it's a couple weeks before the election. So maybe I'll have to sneak back there and get some of the bread and the jam and the yes, like and uh, that way. And uh, it was a very good meeting. And we talked about finding common ground. We talked about the priority that we have all given to jobs and economic development. and. Uh, Obviously, it's the prerogative of the leadership in both the Senate and the House how to proceed beginning January 4th for them. But my hope would be that we can share some uh, ideas that we each have and that we can find an agreement that we can get uh, some initiatives passed and, and signed that will uh, encourage uh, business growth and job creation. The majority leader indicated her background support uh, for small business, uh, encouraging their startup and, and expansion. I certainly support that. So we'll look forward to working with uh, both of you. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. if I have to go out and buy a couple of larger suits as well as all the M&Ms, I may, I may I'll, I'll send the bill to the, 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 the caucus. So. <laughs> small business growth. Small well, business yeah. Growth. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I think Ron, do you want to go ahead? Uh, well, I would just like to say it's, uh, it has been great for me to be back in the Capitol, and um, it, perhaps it's a little bit easier role for me in that I have already established relationships with some great senators who I've worked with in for eight years. Well, not quite. But Five years. Eight years, right? <laughs> eight for us. Um, and so um, we know each other, and um, obviously everybody's role has shifted considerably, but it will be fun uh, to um, meet each other on that new turf and to start working together again well and and I think we all understand how how much work how much hard work we're gonna have to do over the next five months so uh, we really appreciate uh, governor and lieutenant governor coming upstairs and, and starting to build those relationships both at the personal level and at the staff level because we're gonna need a lot from you guys Tina we're going to need a lot from you, and uh, uh, and I'm optimistic. I, I will make one bold prediction here, and hopefully not bring any disrespect to people I have served with before, but my guess is that the new governor is going to get along a lot better with this majority leader than the last two individuals who hold those who held those positions. <laughs> Big statement. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think so I think we're off to a great start. I think we're off to a great start, Rachel. And uh, and we do. We we look forward to working together, particularly on jobs and economic growth. We talked about small business. We talked about the importance of even getting to those kind of issues before we get to the budget. You know, the the, the budget will uh, dominate the session. There's a calendar that kind of lays that out, but there may be some things that we can do together early, early being January or February, uh, in a bipartisan fashion to send out a strong pro-jobs message uh, for the state of Minnesota. So I personally really look forward to working with all these three people behind me, and uh, it was a, fu it was a fun, fun session this afternoon. Governor, where is there common ground here? Well, that's what we will begin to explore, and but I think in terms of streamlining business uh, regulations and procedures, uh, Lieutenant Governor elected through our campaign done some work in that area, meeting with business groups and environmental groups and, and other labor and others concerned in, in a preliminary way in the previous months and we believe there are opportunities there. I certainly heard my 114 community meetings from people who were dissatisfied with the lack of uh, timely agency responses. Uh, 
small businesses, uh, Lutzen, for example, with the DNR, and I could cite numerous examples of those who just felt that there wasn't a, a timely response, uh, even within the existing frameworks, and if the legislature chooses to uh, codify those uh, timetables for response, uh, we'd work with them to make sure that they're reasonable, allow for public input, but that they also do permit the businesses to uh, get moving, get started, and, and to expand. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we move the bonding bills that during, during the campaign to, from the even-numbered year, 2012 <coughs> to 2011, and ask the legislature to consider that. That's obviously their prerogative, but those jobs that you know are funded through with those projects uh, are in the those 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 buildings are built or they're rehabilitated. And as Tom Stinson, when we met with him last week, pointed out, it's really the, the repair projects, the improvement projects that are the most labor intensive. Uh, those are jobs that are performed by private contractors. They employ people in the private sector. Uh, uh, unemployment, according to Mr. Stinson, is highest in Minnesota among the people in the building trades. So, you know, whether the legislature, uh, the leadership, and others concur with that or not. But, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll, I'll be offering ideas uh, and welcome their ideas, and we'll see where we can find, uh, find agreement. I'll let, let the majority leaders respond to that. Oh, well, and, um, you know, I think our focus has always been a little more on the private sector and what we can do. Uh, with, well, first of all, I was really pr uh, glad to hear about the streamlining regulation, and I thought it was a great opportunity to have the lieutenant governor-elect, who will be uh, heading up a lot of that jobs creation discussion uh, for this administration, and then our jobs chairman in the room. So I thought that was very productive. Then we have some uh, slightly different approaches, but we're we're open to all the ideas. We'll look at them. We'll throw out our ideas, and uh, I think we can do some really good things for the state of Minnesota. So does that mean you're open to an odd number of responses? <laughs> I think I think we'll uh, we'll have all ideas come to the table and 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 you know he, listen. Well, for regulation, uh, can that be done by executive order? Well, that's that. so, you know, again, I, I want to have the opportunity to bring commissioners on board. We're in that process now and and, and really f uh, pr pr provide the, the detail that they'll have. But, you know, some of it could be done. I certainly intend to insist with commissioners and as part of the interview process that they make sure that they recognize that, uh, that each one of us, them, and their employees are paid uh, with people's hard-earned tax dollars and that people have a right to uh, timely responses, to uh, making sure that uh, those uh, problems and concerns they have are addressed respectfully and, and, and as I say, responsibly and in a timely fashion. So I think a lot of that could be achieved and will be achieved by both the executive order as, as well as just administrative practices put into place by agency heads and their subordinates, but to the extent the legislature has particular areas that they want to, uh, as I say, codify and, and require that of the executive branch, then we'll, we'll collaborate on that, and that may be useful and from our standpoint as well to have that uh, spelled out in law. So we'll, we'll, we'll find those areas we'll have agreement, I hope, and I expect. What about the issue of taxes? It seems like the campaigns obviously have very different messages on that subject. Is there any common ground on that issue? Well, we, we um, actually, uh, we didn't touch much on the text discussion this time. That was kind of interesting. Um, I think that I think that we definitely there are going to be some you know principled stands that both sides are going to take on certain issues. Uh, what we tried to focus on in this one is uh, in this meeting was some of the common ground because I think that's where we need to start. And so jobs is very helpful. We talked a little bit about confirmations. Uh, I tried to wiggle some names out for you, but uh, this was a vault there. They would not give me any names, uh, but I tried for you, Doug. Um, uh, you know, so we, we talked a little about that, and the Senate is committed to uh, very open, fair, honest confirmations. I think Senator Michelle talked about we're not interested in any kind of 3 a.m., um, you know, shoot downs of any of any names. Uh, so that was another area I think we found some common ground on, and uh, that will work from there. Looking ahead, maybe there's no more important project in Minnesota than the PolyMet project. And the EPA rejected it so far for many reasons, but most of them were modeling over testing. But there was one thing that was critical, and they said you need a financial assurance bill. And it went nowhere last year. Could we get a financial assurance bill out of the legislature this year and get it signed? Hmm. Because I think that would start the digging. Specific on Parliament. Uh, I mean, we did not talk about poly. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to come up. I know the governor has some uh, has some strong feelings about, and and we do too. We don't even have our committee set up yet, so I don't want to get 
you know, the worst thing that one of the leaders can do is get too far ahead of their caucus. But uh, I think it's uh, suffice it to say that, that the PolyMet project, the jobs associated with that, are at the top of the jobs, uh, the chair of the Senate Jobs Committee's list. How about Metro Dome replacement? Did hmm. the dome come up? I'll let you start with the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, 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 we talked about that, and, uh, you know, I, again, uh, I read what, with interest, what Senator Rosen indicated, uh, that there would be something forthcoming at the end of January. I mean, I think uh, I would agree, and again, I defer to the legislature in this in terms of the realistic way in which major decisions like this are made, at least in my n nine legislative sessions that I've been involved in from the executive branch in the past, is that uh, they tend to, you know, get resolved near the end of the session. And I think we obviously need some time to uh, bring the Vikings forward with uh, proposals to see what uh, financing proposals others have. I'm very much willing, uh, indicated, to be involved, not just to be on the sidelines and you know, just to shoot down proposals uh, after they've been developed, but to engage in that process from the very beginning. And, and you know, we'll have to look at the various options for sites, for financial participation. And you know, I've said all along it can't be coming out of the general fund. The, if there is a bonding being issued for the purpose of the stadium, that it needs to be paid off with the, such uh, things as uh, surcharges on tickets and beverages and and souvenirs and the like. So in other words, paid off by the, the users and the beneficiaries of the stadium. And I've said that any public cost has to be more than offset by the public benefits, like any economic development project, where the benefits from projections, I've seen 8,000 construction jobs over three years, and the taxes paid by those people who are, many of whom are not working today, who would be working. And the contractors and the subcontractors, the revenues uh, they gain, and therefore the taxes they and their employees pay, and all that economic uh, stimulation and the multiplier effect of it, as you get with a major economic development project, all those benefits to the, to the people of Minnesota, to the state, to our offsetting our, our budget deficit, uh, weigh any public cost. If we can devise that kind of proposal, and the legislature obviously has, has the lead on it in terms of uh, its passage, uh, then I'll be supportive of it. Governor, does the urgency increase at all with the dome deflation and the image around the nation of this destruction at the dome? Does that add any urgency to this? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> it's a stark picture, having been in, the, in there last Sunday morning, and uh, Seeing, seeing, you know, its uh, condition there, and you know, I, I've not had a chance to talk to the uh, chair Terwilliger, for whom I have a high regard, and, and others there, and obviously, I think they're still making the assessment too of what's uh, going to be possible in terms of the repair or the replacement, and and then, you know, it, it underscores, I think, again, that this is a, an aging facility. And, and it's one that you know, the Vikings have in, indicated they're uh, not going to renew a lease for. So I, I would expect, and I haven't had any conversation with them, that the, that would, uh, this would be further reason for them to, to, to reaffirm that stance. But again, I, I think that if you look at the, the history of the Metrodome, it was built uh, for $55 million, authorized for 60. They built it right in the aftermath of the 82 recession, put people back to work. The bonds were paid off. I think the uh, the uh, blink uh, blink tax uh, blinked on once, but basically those bonds were paid off uh, through the Sports Facilities Commission by the proceeds from the stadium and the revenues gained. And the you know site's been used, and it's not quite applicable now because you had then the Twins and the Vi uh, Vikings and the Gopher, and you had youth athletics, and there was revenues as uh, you know purpose designed very I thought skillfully for the uh, amateur sports uh, commission and the like. And there's rollerblading on the week uh, nights, and near near and dear to my heart, Rolling Stone concerts and Monster <laughs> Mash uh, uh, truck events, and the whole uh, uh, f you know use of the facility is one that has generated over the course of uh, three decades now a multiple yeah. benefit. Forgive me for interrupting. Yeah. Does this add urgency to, to this? I don't know that it adds urgency. I, th I think it, it underscores the imperative, but uh, the reality of the situation, given the condition of the, the facility. But, you know, I mean, I, again, I defer to the experts. I think they're, I'm guessing they'd probably say you could reinflate it, repair it, reinflate it, and it would still be a functional facility in its present form. I mean, this didn't happen uh, except under unusual circumstances, although they weren't that 
totally rare in Minnesota, but but I you know again I think that the the, the urgency exi that existed before is probably hasn't been affected in terms of something needing to happen in this legislative session, but uh, the imperative may have been added to it. But I'll defer to the legislative leadership on that. <laughs> well, and and Pat, yeah, you, I mean your question, the the picture, the photo, the YouTube is dramatic. But I don't think it's any more dramatic or any more urgent than the state of our economy. Our economy has deflated. Our state jobs picture has flatlined. So, you know, we might have spent a minute and a half in our session today with Governor Dayton talking about the Metrodome, but we really got to do the first things first, okay? And uh, we've got a significant budget challenge. Uh, as we like to say, we don't just have a budget deficit, we have a jobs deficit. And so we want to we want to focus like that uh, on that issue, on the jobs issue, on small business, and we want to do that with a relentless, everyday uh, focus. Um, so I know we love our football and we love our Vikings, um, but first things first, and uh, we've got a massive economic challenge in front of us. One more question, uh, Governor. In terms of the MA expansion, the DHS officials said the other day that. Could take up until October to get this done. Is that going to be reasonable under a date administration? Yeah, I find that totally unacceptable. And uh, meeting next Monday with uh, Commissioner Ludeman and uh, I assume the, the state Medicaid director, uh, those comments, both in terms of the 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 the, the, uh, the net cost effects and the timetable, came as a complete surprise to me. And I, I surmising the, based on the reaction of. Uh, President Governor, I can't speak for him. It came as a surprise to him as well. So I, I think we need to get the, all the facts, and that's the purpose of the meeting next Monday. But I, I find eight months to be totally unacceptable. Where are you on pension? We'll be seeing <laughs> uh, We don't have any more to report. The, we're, uh, the process is uh, just continuing. I go right from here to another three hours of meetings and more tomorrow and six hours on Saturday. and. As soon as we have a, another a group to uh, announce, we'll, we'll do so. Do you, you folks plan to meet together regularly from here on through the session, or is this a one-time deal until the end? I, I, look, I look forward to it. If they, if they load me up with M&Ms every time, I might have to <laughs> spread them out or uh, put parameters. But uh, anyway, no, I, I, yes, no, this will be ongoing, ongoing and some uh, in uh, majority leader's office and some, I hope, it's a, either our, our, my office or the residents, and this needs to be an ongoing collaborative process. Yeah, and and the, the incoming board. lieutenant governor has some close ties with the Senate, so right. the, look the forward to that. New nuclear power uh -huh. that all and didn't, wasn't discussed. Wasn't discussed. What's your, what's your feeling about it? Uh, let's say, we'll save that one for another day. <laughs> <laughs> I opposed it in the campaign. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to change my position on it at this point. Taxes. You discussed stadium for a minute and a half. There was some discussion of regulation. You were in there for a while. What did you discuss? No. Uh, the primary focus, Rachel, was on, was on the job situation. Uh, uh, feeling out that, looking for common ground in jobs, talking about a timetable for um, potential jobs bill. Um, we hashed out a little bit, as I said, the differences. Is it bonding? Is it uh, focused on the private sector? Um, so that was, I would say, the lion's share of our discussion. Also, we just spent a little time getting to know one another. I think the governor-elect and I have, uh, and you maybe don't remember, but you came out to St. Michael to one of my local schools when you were in the Senate. Uh, and uh, coincidentally, Tom Emmer and I <laughs> came uh, and and met with you and that was the first time and the second time was at Almanac on the night I was elected so I was uh, probably yes yeah, a little uh, <laughs> not being giddy. a little giddy um, so they, you know that was just a little bit of time to get to know each other which I think is really important it's about this is about relationships too and uh, we hope to have a, a cooperative one this, this, is, this is the beginning of the beginning <laughs> thank you Governor, are they are peanut M &M. these are peanut, peanut yes. M &M. yes they are I'm familiar. <laughs> <laughs>